morning, campers, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Camp Cryptid. I am your host, Erica Fett, and I am so excited for today's episode. But first, I'd like to thank everyone so much for hanging out during last week's episode on Campfire Tales. I always get so excited to listen to everyone's tales of paranormal encounters, cryptid encounters, UFO encounters, and all the spooky goodness in between. So thank you so much to all of you listeners for contributing to those episodes. It is something that makes my day every time I get a submission. So thank you so much. Now, today's episode is going to be on some of Mexico's coolest cryptids and urban legends and haunted places. And I am so excited to dive into this topic with everyone today. Now, Mexico has such a rich history and is full of mystical stories and legends that have helped shape this beautiful country. Uh, Not only did civilizations like the Aztecs in Mexico contribute to some huge advancements in engineering, but we are still blessed to this day with many inventions from Mexico. So, shout out to Mexico. (laughs) First off, I'd like to talk about one of the most known Mexican urban legends and entities that has existed. There are movies about it, there are stories about it, and it's something that is pretty cemented in uh, Mexico's history, and that is La Llorona. And La Llorona is also known as the Weeping Woman. Now, as the story goes with her, she was once a beautiful mother, but she was inflicted with jealousy and madness when she stumbled upon the engagement party of her lover and the father of her children. So, it pretty much drove her insane. Now, in extreme anger and a fit of rage, she took the lives of her children by drowning them in a nearby river. And due to this, she now walks the earth inflicted by extreme grief for eternity over the loss of her children at her own hands. Now, It is said that she can be seen around bodies of water in Mexico, all over Mexico. And no matter how she finds you, if you come into contact with La Llorona, it is always going to end in one way, and that is death. Now, there are definitely variations to the story and the origins of La Llorona, and it's a tale in some form that has existed since the 1500s. But no matter the tale and no matter the origins of this ghastly beauty, It is always one associated with fear of this haunting specter and the death that she brings. So that is one that I wanted to start off the episode with. And that is one that to me always stood out in uh, any type of urban legend about Mexico. And like I said, there are movies about her. There are stories about her. And these stories have existed since way before we were all around. So it is one definitely that is um, to me one of the cornerstones of urban legends and entities within Mexico. So. But there's no doubt that Mexico is full of mystical beings and entities and vampires and witches. And so La Tisigua is an entity of a woman that is more of a seductress. She is usually said to have long, beautiful hair, and she also wanders around the river and seduces men that may be weak in morals or corruptible. So basically, just like La Llorona, she is also known for being around bodies of water, right? Basically, the story is is that she kind of leaves after she encounters these, these men. She leaves them in like a constant state of confusion and madness. And they can't break free from that madness. So unlike La Llorona, she, La Tisigua, is more of, uh, she just leaves them in this state of confusion and madness. And she doesn't really inflict death upon them. Um, But it is very interesting that there are so many specters and so many entities that are around these bodies of water. You also have La Lechuza, which is more of a witch that is kind of like a shapeshifter between an owl. She basically supposedly lures people in with her cries and her wails. And when you see La Lechuza, it basically is a bad omen. Like, beware, (laughs) because bad things are about to happen to you. I always thought that that one was really, really cool. And, you know, like I said, I always talk about how in a lot of these sightings of UFOs and these sightings of some of these cryptids, owls are always kind of like one of the things that people are always saying that these sightings are. So I do find it very interesting that there is an owl. Owl witch, which I think is so cool because I love owls. So (laughs) I'm not going to complain about anything being an owl. Now, Mexico is always one that has a deep appreciation and respect for the water. And that's why you will find a lot of mythology that surrounds bodies of water, whether it be giant serpents that they worship or beings that exist around the water. It is one that you will see recurring in Mexican folklore. And I think that that is so cool because who doesn't love a giant serpent, right? (laughs) But one of the things I really love about Mexico is there is a cryptid called the Black Demon. 
And the Black Demon, to me, is probably one of the coolest cryptids that I've looked into. And there aren't many sightings of the Black Demon. But basically, with these sightings of this cryptid, uh, it was said to be a giant shark-like creature off of the Baja coast near California. And some people think that this creature, the Black Demon, was like 25 feet long at least. Uh, So a lot of people started to theorize that this could be a megalodon that still exists or some kind of giant shark that we haven't identified. And others also think that it could be some kind of giant whale that's just an anomaly that's just black instead of uh, the, the normal color of like this grayish color, right? So the Black Demon is definitely one that I wanted to talk about because it's just, you know, a giant shark. It's like, who doesn't love the idea of some kind of giant megalodon still existing in the ocean? And and I always talk about how much I love ocean creatures, and I have a deep respect for the ocean as well. Uh, and I did my my sea creatures and cryptids of all the lakes and oceans, and I it's one that I could literally, I could do an entire season just on <laughs> sea creatures and lake cryptids because there are so many. But this black demon, I was just like, you know, it's it's like... I've been seeing so many things about Jaws with it being July 4th, and it's just crazy to think that there is this like giant shark that could be existing just off the coast of Mexico. So that is one I wanted to drop because I was like, that is definitely a cool cryptid. <laughs> but one of the other things that I wanted to talk about today was the vampire of Belen Cemetery, which is in Guadalajara. And I've been to Guadalajara, and it is probably one of my all-time favorite places that my husband and I have been to. It is beautiful, and there are agave plants that are the size of houses, and it is just a beautiful landscape in Guadalajara. And this cemetery is actually located in Guadalajara. And I'm so sad now that I found this and I didn't go see this because I'm like, oh my goodness, I could have went. Ah! Um, but now this cemetery is very cool uh, because it not only does it have this legend of this vampire tree and vampire, but it also has a ton of other hauntings because it was basically originally built for patients that died during epidemics. So you have this like mass grave of people who died during these epidemics. And then you have all these other little legends that surround the cemetery. So I I think it's definitely worth checking out if you're in the area. So it was always rumored to have a lot of haunted activity, right? But the story of the vampire is actually pretty cool. It is believed that a vampire was buried in the cemetery after he was staked through the heart. But soon after this vampire was buried in this giant grave, a tree started to grow from the stake that was in his heart. So it's believed that once the tree's roots broke through this grave, that the vampire may rise again to inflict terror on the region. Now, some people even believe that by cutting into the branches of this tree or the bark of this tree, that blood would run from it. So I think that one was definitely one I wanted to talk about because I thought it was so cool. And I, you know, I love me some vampires. And I just thought that that one is, I'm so sad that I didn't go visit while I was in Guadalajara. And (laughs) I'm like, now I have to take another trip. So. But, you know, like I said, not only is Mexico full of urban legends and folklore, it is full of so many haunted locations. Now, there is no denying the heinous acts of humans and horrible methods of execution that have existed since the beginning of time all over the world, right? Uh, You know, you had the brutality of the Vikings and their blood eagle, their first drawing and quartering of a human in England. And then you had the atrocities of the Spanish Inquisition, and those are just a few heinous acts of many over the course of civilizations, right? But back in the days of exploration, stories of the Aztecs made them known and feared throughout not only Mesoamerica, but throughout Europe. Now, one of the most haunted places that I've come across is the ruins of Templo Mayor, and it is now located in present-day Mexico City, but it was once a stupendous center of Aztec civilization called Tenochtitlan. Now, this temple was also the site of over 4,000 brutal human sacrifices, and later attacks on this temple left many dead. Now, the Aztecs were incredibly metal. I, like, honestly, like, this is one of my favorite civilizations to research, and I just think that they are incredibly fascinating. Not only were they incredibly metal and brutal and fierce, they had fiercely decorated warriors that wore actual skins and skulls of jaguars. And the warriors' faces would peek through these skulls of the jaguars. They would sacrifice prisoners to their gods on the top levels of their temples. They would cut open their stomachs with razor-sharp obsidian blades and then raise the beating hearts in the air before letting the lifeless bodies roll down the hundreds of stairs of the temple. 
they would sometimes even flay the faces and entire bodies of those sacrificed. So that just paints a picture of how fierce this civilization was. In fact, these temples were almost like a white color, right? So as these bodies, these lifeless bodies would roll down the stairs after, you know, going through this brutal sacrifice, you know, like over 150 feet of stairs, right? Uh, the stairs created like looking like a river of blood. It is like so fascinating. I like loved watching and reading all of the information on the Aztecs. And it was always one that I always grew up like loving. Like, you know, it was like the Toltecs, the Olmecs and like the Aztecs and Mayas. And it was just like this insanely fascinating culture, right? Now, to even paint a darker picture uh, of these temples, on each side of the stairs of these like giant temples would be like a tower-like formation. And it would be built and surrounded by human skulls, which, you know, just like I said, just so metal <laughs> in like every single way. Um, and then more human skulls from these people that were sacrificed would be placed through these large wooden stakes through the heads to put on display as well. Now, it's crazy because this giant city was essentially almost completely demolished during the Spanish conquest. So I'm very happy that they started excavating the site in the 1970s to find these artifacts and to preserve the history of this incredibly important site for this fierce and feared civilization. Now, although the ruins of this huge temple still exist as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, there's also an amazing museum right next to the ruins that is dedicated to preserving the artifacts that were at one point buried and shrouded in mystery. So it does make me wonder if this museum has any creepy activity or if people have gotten haunted vibes from being there. So a lot of the... The artifacts that they pull are completely made available for the public. So you would think that with all of these sacrifices and all of this that surrounds the civilization, if that feels a little haunted in, in downtown Mexico City. So I'd love to hear from anybody who lives there or if you visited this this museum to see if it feels a little like creepy or a little like haunted. Um, and, you know, and the cool thing is, too, is not only were the Aztecs like so incredibly fierce and brave, they also had the Aztec death whistle. And if you've never heard this sound, I'm telling you, it is it's like being transported back in time. So basically, it's a resonator, and it, it's almost in the shape of a skull, right? So they make it look like a skull. When they blow into this whistle, it sounds like people are screaming. So it's said that during these sacrifices, or even when they were going into war or battle, they would basically blow on these whistles to add just like this effect of people just completely fearing these warriors. So like I said, so metal <laughs> in so many ways. I think that honestly, this temple, I would love to visit Templo Mayor, and I would love to know if anybody listening has been to Templo Mayor, and if you feel like it was haunted. Um, I just want to, I just want to go around at night. So yeah, but like I said, there are a ton of haunted places in Mexico, and one of the most haunted places is also the Island of Dolls. So this island is supposedly haunted by the ghost of a little girl that drowned and washed up on the shore. After finding our body, one of the island's residents ended up hanging the doll from a tree as a memorial after the person started to hear voices and whispers asking where her doll was. So kind of like in tribute, people started hanging more dolls. Now, the weird thing is, is that after this resident ended up finding this little girl, he actually drowned too. So this entire island is just full of dolls that people have left for these souls that have passed on the island. People say now with the dolls, though, something creepy came with it. People also say that when you visit this island, it almost feels like you're being watched the entire time you're walking around. People say that the dolls will whisper to them and that the eyes of the dolls will move and follow you as you walk around this mysterious island. So there are definitely some paranormal things happening on this island. So uh, it's definitely creepy and dolls are definitely creepy. <laughs> So you add you add an island full of dolls and like get out of town like that sounds terrifying. <laughs> now, one of my favorite places that I read about in doing this research was La Posada del Sol and it's a hotel. And this hotel is also in Mexico City. So if you're, you know, deciding to go take a trip to Mexico and you want to go to Templo Mayor and you decide to do like a whole haunted like trip, definitely go try to visit La Posada del Sol. Um, but basically this 
huge hotel was built in the 1940s. And its grand plans of being like a huge hub for business and recreation and kind of like being like the go-to spot for anybody coming into town, like a luxury place, right? It was envisioned by a local businessman who's named Francisco Saldana Galvan. He basically wanted this hotel to be like this grand center, right? This hotel is massive. We're talking, there are theaters inside, there are gardens, it's got over 600 rooms. Uh, He brought in local artists to do like murals. There's tile mosaics all over the walls. There are places for worship. There are, I mean, it is literally just massive. And he wanted this place to kind of be like the all-in-one center, right? However, less than a year after it opened, it was forced to close due to the increased cost of finishing construction and the debt that Galvan had accrued with the project. Now, in grief and madness, knowing that this project, his lifelong project, was about to close, he etched a curse into the property, which you can see on a wall still to this day, that basically curses the property. It curses everything. But he etched that curse just before killing his family and hanging himself in the bell tower of the property. So people to this day believe that his curse still reigns on this hotel, which is why it stayed abandoned. Nobody really wanted to take on the property. Nobody wanted to finish it. It already had this awful history attached to it now at this point. And not only that, but a lot of people believe that Galvan was part of the Freemasons. And some stories even say that he practiced satanic rituals. And that's why symbolism is seen all throughout the hotel. There have also been many stories since the hotel closed about torture and rituals that occurred deep within the walls of the hotel. Rumors that children were tortured and punished in the basement didn't seem too far off from the truth after a little girl's body was found in a chamber of the basement. Now, there is even still an offering table in the basement and people leave offerings of small toys and candy, hoping that her ghost won't attach to them and haunt them. So I think that that is definitely an interesting location. And like I said, if you get a second in your day, look up La Posada del Sol. It is definitely something that would have been beautiful had it been finished. So yeah. Now, when it comes to Mexican folklore and cryptids, I mean, there are so many I didn't even get into. And I I honestly want to do a part two because uh, there are so many I didn't even get into today. And I just honestly, like, I, I need to do a part two already. So, and like I said, I would love to hear from anybody who's visited or if anybody lives there and you have any folklore or urban legends or entities that you would love to hear me talk about and like research, please give them to me. I am like, uh, give me all of the good, good things to read about. I've been to Mexico numerous times and it is one of my favorite places to visit. It is not only beautiful, uh, but the culture, the food, the people make it such an enjoyable place to visit. So now I am I am totally inspired now to go to Mexico City and uh, maybe get tattooed there because there are some amazing tattoo artists there in Mexico City as well. So yeah, this one this one was really cool to read about. And I'd never heard of La Posada de Sol and reading about that and just looking at like Google Maps and like looking at all of the stories and, and pictures that people have posted. It was really incredible to read about. Now, when it comes to watching things that are Mexican movies, I would like to say one of my favorite things that I have watched is like an anthology called Satanic Hispanics. I think that that is one of my favorite anthologies that I've watched. I am dying for a second one. So please, if anybody knows anybody, please make a second one, please. (laughs) And also VHS 85. VHS 85 is one of the more recent VHS movies that has come out and they did a story on the earthquake that actually happened in Mexico in 1985. Basically, the story is in VHS 85, sorry, spoilers, um, that the earthquake awakens these Mayan gods. But VHS 85, the, that one was one of my favorite segments. And side note, <laughs> I talked about Guadalajara earlier, and one of my favorite creators of all time, Guillermo del Toro, is actually from Guadalajara. And to kind of kick off this episode, I was like, I'm going to watch Kronos, which was one of his first films. And I'm telling you... I'm addicted. I watched it and the first like 10 minutes, (laughs) like just the intro, I was like, someone knew that this was exactly what I wanted to see in a movie and I'm here for it. But I loved Kronos. I actually now 
had to go and, and hunt down the um, cabinet of curiosities that Guillermo del Toro did uh, that had the Kronos little replica in it. So <laughs> yeah, that's on its way to me right now. And I'm so excited. Um, but I loved that movie. I thought it was amazing. And to see his art so early on was just incredible. And spoilers, I know this movie is so old, but spoilers, it is also kind of like tied in with vampire lore. And it is my favorite thing ever. So if you have not seen Kronos, I highly recommend it. And what's kind of cool is, you know, like we saw Ron Perlman in Hellboy, right? And Ron Perlman is actually in this is probably one of his earlier roles. So it's very cool to see that relationship kind of flourish over the years uh, with him being Hellboy later on. So uh, love that. It was it was such a fun watch. And it was just like I said, to see his creativity so early on was just uh, I loved it. And yes. But yeah, other than that, I'm so excited. I just want to thank everybody so much for, especially patrons, for voting on this episode. Like I said, I've been to Mexico a few times. And, you know, when I research these things, it's like I've been to Guadalajara. And now I'm sad I didn't get to go to uh, St. Paula Cemetery where the vampire tree is. And um, and now I just, I have to go back, right? Like this is what this is telling me is that I have to go back. I have to do like a whole tour of Mexico now. Uh, And I really, really want to go to the Templo Mayor Museum. And so if anybody listening has been there, I would love to hear about any spooky things that you've experienced or if you have any other cryptids or entities or urban legends in Mexico, then maybe during part two, I can just dive into and I'm so excited. But yeah, so other than that, I have patrons right now. I'm going to be making a post for everybody to vote on the cryptid episode at the end of this month. So I'll make sure to post that soon. Um, And other than that, I hope y'all have been having a great July so far. I know we're almost like already halfway through the year and I'm like, (laughs) what is 2024, right? I say this every episode. I'm just like, what? (laughs) Someone's pressing fast forward and I need y'all to stop on it. Okay. I need, I need a, I need a a day where it doesn't feel like the day passed in like two hours. Right. And I don't know if y'all feel the same way, but holy cow. Okay. Like someone's definitely, someone's definitely pushing fast forward on us. But, but yeah, other than that, have a great week y'all. I hope, I hope everybody's eating a lot of good food (laughs) and I'm like dying now to go eat me some, some good Mexican food now. Cause that's my, my favorite food of all time. So, um, your girl, your girl is like, I'm fiending for all this good food now. But yeah, so thanks again, everybody, for listening. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. And until next time, take care. 